Hey guys, so this video will be a review of what we discussed in class 3. But first we're going to do a quick recap of everything else we've covered so far. So of course we started with the alphabet and we saw the different rules around vowels and consonants. And then following that we learned people, places, time and things, which is just another way of saying nouns. And now we're going to learn how to describe those people, places, time, and things. And of course, we describe nouns using adjectives. And in this lesson, we're going to describe people, places, time, and things using descriptive phrases. And we'll talk about what I mean between these two things. For the nouns that we're describing, instead of using any of the specific nouns that we learned, I'm just going to say onye or mado for person, ebe for place, ihe for a thing, and oge for time. You already have the lists of these different categories, so you can go in and plug in specific words. I'm just going to use the general words for these categories of nouns when I describe them in the lesson. And then descriptors, I've already mentioned that we're going to look at adjectives. And by adjectives, I mean individual words that come before or after the noun. So usually in Igbo, we talk about adjectives coming after the noun, which is the opposite from what it is in English. But we actually have some adjectives that do come before the noun, and that matches up with what we have in English. But for the most part, most Igbo adjectives come after the noun. And then, as I mentioned, we'll look at descriptive phrases, and these are phrases that include a verb. So you're using a verb and other words to actually you give an entire phrase or say an entire phrase that describes something, because sometimes you just don't have a single word that gives the description, the description that you want. So let's see what the first adjective is. For this, we'll start by discussing demonstrative adjectives. And this is just a fancy word for this and that. In Igbo, a is this. So onya is this person. Eba, this place. Iha, this thing. Oka, this time. And then aho or afo is that. Onya aho, that person. Eba aho, that place. Iha ho, that thing. Oka ho, that time. Next, we have color. And first, we'll look at color using one word. So here are, the, here are all the colors that we'll learn. Oji is black or dark. Ocha, white or light. Uri. Ntuntu. Ntuntu. Otangele. Uhye or meme or obaropara. Then uhye ocha. Ododo. Edu. Uhye edu or oroma. Oledo and olocha. Now let's use these colors to describe some nouns. Onyoji is a black person or a dark skinned person. Eboji is a black place. Ihoji is a black thing or something black. Onyocha is a white person or a light skinned person. Ebocha is a white place. And Ihocha is a white thing or something white. Now, using all the other colors, let's describe a place or a thing. It's unusual that you would describe someone as a color that's not OG or Ocha. So I'm keeping these examples specific to a place or a thing. So Eburi or Ihuri is like a, pla a brown place or a brown thing. Ebentuntu. Ihen tuntu, a great place or a great thing. Ihen tuntu, eben tuntu. Ebe otangele, ihen otangele. Ebe uhie, or ebe meme, or ebo baropara, or ihen uhie, or ihen meme, or ihen baropara. Ebe uhie ocha, or ihen uhie ocha. Ebe ododo, or ihen ododo. Ebe edo or ihe edo. Ebe unhe edo or ebe oroma or ihe unhe edo or 
ihe oroma ebe ola edo or ihe ola edo ebe ola ocha or ihe ola ocha for these colors i think an item like ihe applies in a better way but i mean you can also have a place let's say like a building or a restaurant that's pink so you could say ebe uhi ocha but usually you probably use these colors with something so ihe rather than ebe but here are the examples if you want them so this is color using just a single word the name of the color after the noun that you're describing now here is color using a phrase and the phrase that we have is de plus a color de plus a color means is that color so whatever color you put after de you're saying that that noun is that color so let's see examples de og means is black or is dark de ocha is is white or is light so onye de og is someone who is black or dark skinned onye de ocha someone who is white or light skinned ocha might also mean clean so when you say onye de ocha you might also be saying someone who is clean ebe de og somewhere that is dark or black ebe de ocha somewhere that is clean usually ebe de ocha i think it most generally means clean rather than white but i mean it could also mean white but i think most generally you use it to say somewhere that is clean ihe de og something that is black or dark ihe de ocha something that is white or light or clean onye de og onye de ocha ebe de og ebe de ocha ihe de og ihe de ocha now for all the other colors i'm using just ihe to give you examples so ihe de uri something that is brown ihe de ntonto something that is gray ihe de ndondo something that is green ihe de otangeli something that is blue ihe de uhie or ihe de meme or ihe de obarobara something that is red ihe de uhiocha something that is pink ihe de ododo something that is purple ihe de edo something that is yellow ihe de uhiedo or ihe de oroma something that is orange ihe de oledo something that is gold that is gold in color in here the olocha something that is silver okay now we have color using a phrase this is another type of phrase you can say na cha plus a color and it means is colored that color so na cha any color you put after na cha you're saying that the thing you're describing is colored that color let's see examples so for this it can be onye or ebe or ihe for dark and light we don't well for dark we don't actually say na cha you don't say na cho ji it's more common that you would say ne jin ji so this one is like an outlier in this type of phrase arrangement so you say onye ne jin ji somebody that is dark or somebody that is colored dark or somebody that is colored black or something that's colored black or somewhere that's colored black so you can have onye ne jinji someone that's colored dark or black ebe ne jinji somewhere that's colored dark ihe ne jinji something that's colored dark but you're just saying a dark person a dark place or a that a dark thing the verb just happens to be repetitive by saying that's colored a color but you're just saying onye ne jinji a dark person ebe ne jinji a dark place ebe ihe ne jinji a dark thing you can you can also have onye na cha cha ebe na cha cha ihe na cha cha for na cha o cha you might also hear na cha o cha so you might have onye na cha cha ebe na cha cha ihe na cha cha 
and then for all the others nacha works um, simply so you can have ebe na chantunto or ihe na chantunto ebe na chandundo ihe na chandundo ebe na cha otangele ihe na cha otangele ebe na cha unhie or ebe na cha meme or ebe na cha obara obara ihe na cha unhie ihe na cha meme ihe na cha obara obara ebe na cha unhie ocha ihe na cha ihe unhie ocha ebe na cha ododo ihe na cha ododo ebe na cha edo or ihe na cha edo ebe na cha unhie edo or oroma or ihe na cha unhie edo or oroma ebe na cha oledo or ihe na cha oledo and of course ebe na cha olocha or ihe na cha olocha Next, let's talk about size, and this is size using just one word, one adjective. The first we'll talk about is ugu, which is big or large or great. And in class, we were, you know, talking about the similarity with ugu, which means, you know, big, large or great, and uku, which is waste. And we also even brought in oku, but that one uses the o the dotted U, so that one is a little bit easier to differentiate. Oko, leg, is different from uku, waist, which is spelled exactly like uku, big, large, or great. So onyuku is a big person or a large person or just somebody of significance, so a big person or like somebody important. Ebuku, a big place, and ihunku, a big thing. Next, we have small or little, which is obere or ntakere. So, onye obere or onye ntakere. Ebe obere or ebe ntakere. Inho obere or inhe ntakere. And then for oge, obere comes before oge. So, you say obere oge. And then ntakere comes after oge. So, you say oge ntakere. So, onyuku. Ebuku, Ihunku, Onyo Bere, Onyen Takere, Ebo Bere, Eben Takere, Iho Bere, Ihen Takere, Oberoge, or Ogen Takere. Now let's look at size using a phrase. D plus Uku, D Uku means is big. But there's another very specific way of saying is big, and that's Buru Ibu. So onye diuku is the same as onyuku and onye buribu is the same as onyuku. So onye diuku or onye buribu is someone who is big, which is just another way of saying a big person. Ebe diuku or ebe buribu, somewhere that is big. Ihe diuku or ihe buribu, something that is big. And on the other side, we have small using de. So de obere or de ntakere is small. And then another very specific way of saying is small is perempe. So onye de obere, onye de ntakere, or onye perempe is someone who is small. Ebe de obere, or ebe de ntakere, or ebe perempe is somewhere that is small. And inhe de obere or inhe din takere, or inhe perempe, is something that is small. Now let's talk about temperature. For temperature using one word, I think the most common application that you see it with is water. So miroyi for cold water, and miroko for hot water. I'm trying to see if oyi and oko, cold and hot, can come right after any other nouns. When I think about it, Miri is the most common example I can think of. If I think about others, then I'll bring it up in class another day. But in terms of just saying hot and cold with a single word, I think Miri is the most common way that you use it. For anything else that you're talking about, like a place or a thing that's cold or hot, you use a phrase for that. So let's look at temperature using a phrase.
So for cold, you say di oyi, so it's cold, or juroyi is a specific way of saying it's cold. So ebe dioyi or ebe juroyi, somewhere that is cold or a cold place. Ihe dioyi, something that is cold or a cold thing. Ihe juroyi. And then for hot, we have de oko is hot or bo oko is hot. Ebe di oko or ebe bo oko is somewhere that is hot or just a hot place. And ihe di oko or ihe bo oko is somewhere that is hot or a hot thing. Okay, now let's talk about taste and texture using a phrase. So for this, we're just going to talk about things. So any of the things that we learned, most likely food, um, this can apply to. So ihe, something that, so ihe mwere oto, something that has taste, which is a way of saying something that's tasty. Ihe ne mwere oto, something that has no taste or something that is tasteless. Ihe de oto or ihe na to oto, something that is sweet. Ihe de ilu or ihe ne ilu ilu, ihe ne ilu ilu, something that is bitter. Ihe mwere oto ojo something that has a bad taste which is another way of saying something that is sour something that is salty something that is spicy and then in terms of texture actually this is consistency in terms of consistency you can have something that is watery and something that is dry or something that is hard. Now, here are other common adjectives or other common descriptors. Ajo and ojo both mean evil or bad, but ajo comes before the noun that it's describing and ojo comes after the noun. Both of them mean evil or bad, but whichever one you're using, you have to make sure you place it in the correct place. So you say ajo madu or ajo ihe, evil or bad person, evil or bad thing. But you would say madu ojo, ihe ojo, ebe ojo, and oge ojo. And so that's with a single adjective. If you wanted to say is evil or is bad, you say madu di ojo or ihe di ojo, ebe di ojo, oge di ojo. Now, what about what about being good? So, oma is the single word that means good. So, onyoma, good person. Ihoma, good thing. Eboma, good place. Ogoma, good time. But you can also say is good. So, onye demma is someone that is good. Ihe demma, ebe demma, oge demma. You can also talk about being beautiful. So, marama is is beautiful onye marama ihe marama ebe marama oge marama the opposite of that is joronjo is ugly onye joronjo ihe joronjo ebe joronjo oge joronjo in terms of height you can say diogologo diogologo or dorogologo for diogologo, we usually use that specifically for things, so non-living things. So ihe diogologo, any of the different things we learned, diogologo. Torogologo, we can use it for things too, so we can say ihe torogologo, but torogologo is usually what we use for living things, so a person, onye torogologo. So again, ihe diogologo and onye torogologo. We, we, we usually don't say onye diogologo, we usually don't say the person that, it, I don't know, diogologo is for non-living things and dorogologo is for living things, even though dorogologo we can also use for non-living things. The opposite of that is de mbombo is short or sorombombo and de mbombo we can use for people or things, so we can say onye de mbombo or ihe de mbombo 
and then serum umbo we can also use for people or things so we can say on your serum umbo or in, in his serum umbo now we have new uh -huh, or offer is the word for new and then you can also say is new so the uh -huh, or the offer on your home in your home a ball home okay home new person new thing new place new time on your dear home in here dear home a bed your home okay dear home and now we can also talk about the opposite of that which is karanka is old so only karanka a person who is old in here karanka thing that's old a big karanka a place that is old and then we also have dindo or dindo is alive so only dindo is a person who is alive or somebody living and in here dindo is a thing that's alive or something living Muramu is dead. So onye wonramu, someone who is dead or a dead person. Ihe wonramu, something that is dead or a dead thing, like a dead animal or something. Now we can also talk about quantity. And for quantity, we have ototo for many. So ototo mado, many people. Ototo ebe, many places. Ototo ihe, many things. Ototo oge many times ole no ole means few mado ole no ole few people ebe ole no ole few places inhe ole no ole few things then we have nine or nile for all so mado nine ebe nine inhe nine oge nine all people all places all things all time or all the time for so we have many and few then we also have all and none for none to describe people place things and time we use only or odi which actually mean there isn't so you say there isn't a person there isn't a place there isn't a thing there isn't a time but you use that to say no one no place nothing and no time so it would be for no one for no place for nothing and onweyoge or odioge for no time. Nabo is both. So madu nabo, both people. Ebe nabo, both places. Inhe nabo, both things. Oge nabo, both times. Okay, so we also have quantity in terms of numbers. And here I have cardinal numbers, but cardinal numbers are just regular numbers that we use to count like you can have two houses or two people and all of that so you can use numbers as an adjective that's why i'm putting numbers here in this lesson um so um and i'm specifically saying cardinal numbers because the next set of numbers that we'll see are ordinal numbers but let's go ahead and see the cardinal numbers as we use them to count or describe things so we have zero which is adeye and then we have 1 through 10, otu, ofu, both mean 1, then abuo, ato, ano, isen, isin, asa, asato, and itolu. 11 through 19 would be 10 and the number. So irina otu, 10 and 1, irina abuo, irina ato. And on and on and on to get Irina Itolu. Then we have 10 through 90. So this is just counting in tens. So you have Iri, Iria Bo, two tens, Iria To, three tens. And you can have Iria No, Iri Se, Iri Si, Iria Sa, Iria Sato, Iri Tolu. And that's 10 through 90. So if you wanted to say, 95 it would be iri itolu 10 nines na and ise 
five. Ten nines and five. Iri, itolu, na, ise. So you have the words for 10 through 90 and you have the words for 1 through 9. So you can combine those to get anything between what 11 between 10 and 99. I hope that makes sense. And then for 100 through 900 we have nari which is 100 then two hundreds, nari abo, three hundreds, nari ato, and then nari itolu is nine hundred. After nine hundred, you have one thousand, which is puku, and then from one thousand, you can go all the way to one hundred thousand. So puku, puku abo, puku ato, uh, one hundred thousand is puku nari. It just means one, literally, a hundred thousand, puku nari. The next level is million. One million is nde. And you can do one million all the way to 100 million. And even more, but I'm just stopping at 100 million. So nde. Nde abo. Nde ato. Nde nari. After a million, you have a billion. A one billion is ijeri. And then we have ijeri abo. Two billion. Ijeri ato, 3 billion, and then you can have 100 billion, so you can go all the way to Ijeri Nari, 100 billions. After billion, we have trillion, Ijeri Puku, 1 trillion, Ijeri Puku Abuo, 2 trillions, Ijeri Puku Ato, and then you can go all the way to Ijeri Puku Nari. So with these you know, large numbers, you can sit down and break down a multiple digit number and, um, you know, write that out in Igbo. But in terms of like a phone number, for instance, the last four digits of my phone number are 3026. So if I was giving somebody my phone number, I would say, you know, 678, blah, blah, blah. Ato, abo, na, what, isi. So as practice, you can just write out your phone number in Igbo and pronounce the numbers as they would be. Okay, finally, ordinal numbers, as I mentioned. Ordinal numbers are things like first, second, third. You use them to order things or put things in order. So nkembo, you can just say nkembo to mean the first. Or you can have something nkembo, the first something. So onye nkembo, the first person. Ebe in Kimbo, the first place. Ihe in Kimbo, the first thing. Oke in Kimbo, the first time. So you can just say in Kimbo, or you can have something in Kimbo. And then you also have in Kabo, in Kato, in Kano, and on and on. And then the very last thing would be in Ke Ibazo, in Ke Ibazo. And of course, you can also have a noun come before in Kabo. So onye in or you can have it come after in kato. You can come in have come after. You can have it come after in kibazo. So onye in kibazo or ihe in kibazo. And that is all the adjectives and descriptive phrases that I have for you. I hope this video helps you. With this video, this is just you know diving in and saying what these things mean. mean. But you can see that you can start building part of a sentence by naming something and then describing that thing either with a single word or with a, a phrase that includes a verb the next lesson will now be putting action to these things that we've named and described so first we name them then we describe them then we talk about action so next class will be about verbs if you have any questions you have a substitute in class on uh the ninth and you can ask any questions I think he should be knowledgeable enough to answer any of your questions and then if you have additional questions we can always discuss them in the group me or discuss them in another class all right I hope this was helpful and good luck with your review